Welcome, Sensor. We are here in our first, first um, episode, hopefully, of a long series of our Mind Expansion guest uh, session. The idea is that we are aware that Sensor have a huge amount of niche knowledge that we're probably not showcasing enough. So uh, the, uh, I open up this invitation to every sensor to just come and share their knowledge, their perspective, their creative tools, whatever they think it's, it's worth sharing with the community. Uh, because <laughs> our feeling is that there is so much that we still don't know. And, and there is only this much that we as team can actually share with you in mind expansion. So we thought, why don't we turn the camera the other way? And I'm very happy to say that our first uh, guest here is Ralph Cox. Round of applause. Ralph, thank you so much for being the first. We need somebody to break the ice and you were all for it. So we really appreciate that. Um, before introducing the topic, which is super interesting, I have to say, I would like you to just do a little intro about yourself so that people will know you better. Okay. Um, eclectic would be the, the simple thing. So, um, yes, I think, as I put in my CV now, there is, uh, I'm dyslexic, but that wasn't discovered until I was in my 40s. Ooh. So that kind of defined a lot of my earlier uh, flitting from job to job and moving around and, and shifting and trying to find myself um, uh, I've settled on strategy. Uh, maybe that's very late in life, but that's kind of what I do the best. So I've done a lot of things. Um, acting, I'm going to say a little about in a moment, but it's probably what I would be doing if I'd been able to make money at it. So uh, it was a thing I really enjoyed, um, but I had to get realistic at some stage and you have to make a decision. Are you going to be the poor starving actor or not? Um, so I, I decided to move away from that. Um, but I had a, a lot of time um, working on acting and still uh, still engaged. My son's quite interested in drama, so helping him with, with stuff. Uh, yeah. Wow. So this explains up to a point, I guess, uh, the topic that you're introducing today. Would you like to share your title that actually... Um, when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, that's really an interesting angle. Yes. So everybody thinks about acting as uh, a creative medium. And that's very much something where I, I at my most creative. Um, can't draw, can't paint, uh, can sing a bit, can't play any instruments. So <laughs> acting, acting was kind of really late. Um, I was quite late to acting uh i want to say about that but i did still study for a long time i did still work on it, it was in plays uh, a lot of student films low budget so you, you don't learn about the big films and how well they are done but i learned a bit so i've worked a bit on on tv but yeah no no oscars um the topic is what can actors teach us about strategic thinking and this is the side of um, work which I think has helped me since I started to, to get into strategy and strategic thinking, which I've also studied a lot on. But it's kind of like, oh, I do that. Some of it might be natural, but some of it is skills that I learned from mm -hmm. other people. It's not it's not anything. And it's a um, big chunk of it I'm going to talk about is is about character development. Um, mm. I'll get onto that in a moment. So my acting story is another thing that was, was quite late, really didn't like uh, being in plays at school. This was, this was a horrible thing. Um, but in my early twenties, I was, I was uh, thinking about starting to write. Is this something I could do? Because computers, spell checkers were coming out. So maybe I get a computer. And my mother just said, would you like to go and see some plays um being right she had a friend in a drama group a long way and I said that's a good idea so I went along just to kind of watch and observe and as I turned up they said ah we need an ambulance man <laughs> for the next play so I said what's the 
what uh, so you just have to come on and say where's the patient okay <laughs> so this was Whoa. fine and I went on and did this I really enjoyed it and I went for a, quite a major part in their next production and got it and really really found myself enjoying uh, the whole process and learn on stage but no training mm -hmm. this is very much what I'd done um, so I thought well maybe I'll get some training should I go to drama school mm -hmm. Is that the thing you should do? So I started applying for auditions. And at that time, well, it still is very expensive. It's uh, really drama school is one of the few ways you can get an equity card and you can work. So I never got the equity card, jumping ahead, spoiler. Uh, <laughs> but there was a way into, one of the ways into a drama school was that there were at that time, and I'm talking 1990 this is, this is quite a long while ago um there was a grant available from Essex mm -hmm. County Council where I lived and you had to audition for it and when I say a grant I mean a grant one <laughs> one whoa <laughs> one so for the whole county which I don't know is about two million people um of all the people wanting to go to drama school there would be funding available for one person and then there were multiple sets for auditions so I didn't get it I didn't get the grant but I got feedback <clears throat> and it was quite an intensive day so it was a very useful experience because we got some training we got some exercises we got some audition pieces that they gave you that you then had to work on and there was quite a bit of feedback but the one thing that stuck with me is become the person don't act the role wow and that really wormed into and that really wormed into my head i actually drifted away from acting for a few years but uh, got back in and, and ended up doing a full-time drama course um in 95 with the actors institute and that was the perfect course for me because it was very much about that um if you if you look, there is, uh, oh, I forgot his name, should have, should have researched that. Morris um, is a famous acting coach, but he's, he's got a, a book called No Acting, Please. And there are, Ooh. there are various things to look up. So No Please, you will, you will search acting from the ultimate consciousness, which is how you literally become a person. And it's, it's really hard. Um, literally slip in to the body of the person you're trying to be so in acting it's a character it's something that you may be a real person maybe not um i picked out two films which i want to steer people towards if you haven't seen um being john malkovich <laughs> and uh scanner darkly which are two films being john malkovich is where a character actually becomes John Malkovich uh, and actually changes and there's a lot going on it's a funny film with Spike Jones it's, it's, it's really good if you haven't seen it Scanner Darkly is a very dark film uh, um, Ken Reeves I think is the lead um, but it's people who are hidden so it's it's um. the police and the authorities who are hidden in a separate skin and nobody gets to find out who they are so um they only become other people when they're actually outside of their skin. So it's oh. almost the reverse, but they are becoming somebody else inside a skin, seeing things through other people's eyes, infiltrating groups. So there's a lot of spying and stuff like yeah. that. But I, I really like the idea of that film of, yeah. As a, Very metaphorical in a sense. When they're yeah. supposed to be at that um, controlling level, they are in in a skin so although they all think they're at their honest stage they're not at their deceptive stage that's actually when they're at their most dishonest um when they're mm. uh undercover they take off the costume and they're probably being at the most honest when they're behaving with the other people so it's it's a very difficult thing um but i think vital to strategic thinking to understand how people will react to a certain thing and come back is to i would say slip into the skin of the other person there's a saying of um wow. don't mock a man till you've walked a mile in his shoes well you know then you're 
a mile away and you've got his shoes so you can you're free to to get on with that but i i don't think it's about walking in somebody else's shoes is this uh, bizarre kind of phrase and i really want to although it has a dark side of it not get under the skin of another person get in inhabit really inhabit their life know what it is to be another person and actors get to do that all the time <laughs> and how much do you have to research before even get into that place or is it something that Ooh. comes like by being empathetic towards the character Ooh, you segued <laughs> into my next section so <laughs> then i did go to drama school and to my horror not like i wasn't diagnosed dyslexic at that time but i really hate reading still do um but we were given tons of work to do on every piece you need to empathize I'll, i'll come on uh to that in a moment but really research your character know their life know their dreams know their habits which is very important i think that gets missed a lot um particularly on issues like branding so we know people don't uh are not brand loyal from the the bar and shop work um but people are loyal to their habits they don't know how they got them in most cases they don't even realize they've got them they don't know what to, i wonder if that's why supermarkets do this ludicrous thing of switching all the shopping things around every day so that you can't find anything i think it's a bad thing because ultimately you just want to walk to the same place and do the same thing it's part of that instinct but learn learning what drives that because you to make a person real it has to be recognized by the audience as real mm. sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is sometimes it's just two or three things that let you into a character i'll, I'll give an example you've ever seen the film shine about uh, the pianist david helfgott and something now i've forgotten he's jeffrey rush mm -hmm. uh, that was his big break and he got the oscar yeah. um but he said the key thing into his character at the time was the the speed of speech and the mm. speed of thought and how quickly it changed so once he had the text the first thing he worked on was how fast could he get this out and how fast could he switch once he got that lots of other things started to just happen on their own empathy um no judgments mm. i would say empathy is is very important but you you have to go beyond that stage as an actor you will play people doing the most abominable things and you have to accept that you could do them too so i think it's a a, a layer beyond empathy when you when mm. you It's part of getting into the person's skin. You have to accept that. Um, the other thing I learned, which was often repeated, the, the thing we hate most about other people is often a subconscious manifestation of a thing we subconsciously hate about ourselves. You find something not quite right with other people delve it's a really good route to to delve into because it might be stuff that's coming up for yourself that you haven't even thought about um and i found that very useful in acting but i've carried that through in in the strategy work and understanding people and just just kind of accepting anything anybody else does you are you are also capable of <laughs> How do you translate all this experience, acting experience and researches into the strategic field? What would you say are the most important takeaway and something that can be applied even by people that don't have the same background as you? The business relationship, uh, I want to say something else about feedback. So I, mm. I had a bit of a speech. We, we covered that a lot. Um, I also think there is a, a generalized it's outside of strategy but strategy work is is part of it's hard because it works better when it's with other people it's collaborative but at the end of the day you're going to settle on one strategy so for the the given amount of people that are working on something 
just increases the amount of people that are going to be told they're wrong and <laughs> their opinion will be disregarded at the same time. How do you get through that? How do you how do you line that? Acting is is the biggest team event. Yes, some people spend even even somebody alone on stage. There'll be somebody backstage that you're, you're having to work with. But we did a lot on feedback um, and it's strictly sensory. Mm -hmm. What you saw, what you heard, what you felt and knowing that what you felt may not be entirely objective. Um, a lot of what you see and what you hear is not objective, but you're being clear about what was created in you and feeding that back. And then the, the trust is built within the team that what they're receiving is, is got a lot to do with what they sent out, not a person's personal opinions as such. If there's then differences of opinion, that's even better feedback because that's more that you've created, that's more that you've connected with other people. Um, the thing I found the hardest, I think partly the dyslexia, is really being able to articulate what you saw, what you heard, what you felt. And that, that, um, that for me was, was good training, but to communicate it to somebody else, you, you have to be able to articulate it. Um, I want to say a little bit about actual instances where I've used it just by way of example. So um, one thing I've, I've worked on uh, a lot was housing. And that's really when I got into strategy and strategic thinking, as opposed to doing things that I was just able to do. I was applying my learning, but it wasn't specifically on strategy. So this is um, going back to, I think it's 2015. And there was a big emphasis on uh, increasing the rate of house building and how can we get those numbers up so I was doing a lot of really in some cases quite random stuff trying to figure out what are the what are the parameters uh, uncovering the builder's business model which was mm -hmm. great <laughs> but looking through lots of data trying to see patterns and suddenly there was a link between uh, a pattern and I put it on the spreadsheet and there was a clear correlation. There was a time difference which wavered, uh, but this looked great. And it was the number of site visits that a person, uh, the number of person visits a site received mm. uh, compared with the rate of housing. I know the profile. I could draw it for you um, of house building and house sales because it's roughly the same every year. Mm. It may go up a bit. It may go down a bit. But the 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 shape is almost exactly the same so when i saw this data it kind of leapt out to me when i graphed it it was saying i took it to the analysts because it looked like eight to one uh, they got really interested and really excited because site visits is something potentially government could affect mm. so if there's a direct relation between the amount of people visiting a site if we can get more people to visit sites potentially that would increase the rate of sales um, so it was a very exciting moment that I'd made this discovery and they went off and did their statistical analysis they said it's there definitely it said a few times it wobbles to seven or even six but pretty much this is eight visits to every sale and it goes back oh. years and we've missed this as mm. well so it was all very exciting, but I don't stop thinking. So for me, I'm looking to undo my ideas. In what way could I be wrong? And I was looking at the data and looking at the peak and thinking about how we get this out. And then I started to look at December. December, when very virtually no houses are sold in December. And January. In fact, the whole industry basically stops uh, yes. just before Christmas. They stop for two weeks. Conveyances go on two-week holiday, so there's no transactions. You can't buy a house. The 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 banks are lots of bank holidays. Everything just stops. The builders are builders and sites. So, thinking back to my experience in sales, I suddenly projected myself into the sales office on a major building site, and that suddenly really felt very imposing, very tough. If I was there, I've had seven people walk into my office 
to buy a house and they've all said no. If I'm going to reach this eight, which is probably the, the, the target, mm-hmm. that's tough because you've got to make that next sale. And I could almost just by inhabiting feel myself get nervous. And I would really encourage people, if you're in that situation, getting back to the, the Stanislavski, he does speak about this very early on in uh, An Actor Prepares, where he has actors doing a, a, it's a very standard exercise, looking for something. Uh, and they're looking for a particular thing. And then the director says, it's there and you're not going home till you find it. Wow. Suddenly, the behavior is really very real. They're not acting, looking for something. They're actually looking for the thing. And he points out, this is the difference between real life. You, if you're really you know, being the person, being the thing. So I was sitting there getting quite nervous. What would I do? I'd, I'd probably need to start looking for something else. I don't think I could take that pressure. I, 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 I know when... When sales are coming in, my God, it's so easy. And you just get more and you speak to everybody with full of confidence. But when the sales are low, it's very, very hard. I don't know if I could do that. And then I thought, what would I do if I was them? What might I do? And it suddenly hit me. I would wait until I got a sale. And then I would say eight people visited. This is not eight visits per sale. (laughs) This is eight visits per sale. (laughs) So suddenly I went back to the, because this is their sales target. They'll be set on an amount that they've got to sell. And I went back to the House Builders Federation that actually published the data. How solid is this? How are site visits measured? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much self-reported by the, the site Uh-oh. manager. So you're a salesman sitting in the sales office or the, the uh, show home. Nobody else is on site. <laughs> you're going home. If somebody walks in and buys a house, eight people visited. Yay. <laughs> if nobody if nobody buys a house, you, if 20 people walk in, which is fantastic in December, I can't imagine it happening but you only sell one house. Eight people walked in. Yeah. And I think I wouldn't have figured that out, that the data was wrong without actually inhabiting the skin of the person sitting there. And that was, I had to then let down the analysts and gently this data is is not good. This is, this is, this is. (laughs) Yeah, it looks a little bit too neat. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes data only tell part of the story or, you know, the best story you can craft. So there is definitely a story there. If you were to encapsulate everything you learned through your acting career and your experience into uh, a piece of advice for people that really want to get even better at their strategic work, what would you invite them to do from now on? Inhabit other people's skins. Okay. Live- live in their body don't walk in their shoes this is not uh relevant you literally have to see through somebody else's eyes Uh, some of the greatest actors you will love do this very well and it's about forgetting and unknowing Mm. something um there are various tricks to uh faking surprise but to really be surprised is 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 quite hard and is getting that it is part it's a sort of subset of being in somebody else's skin because that's what you do but i think it can be very easy if you're immersed in data um to forget that nobody else has has seen that data and you're seeing something for the first time so uh try and capture that that moment or relive it see see something how how you see it for the first time how try and remember that because as soon as you start getting into data and information it's very easy to lost to lose that initial moment but as an actor you have to just you have to be able to recreate it consistently um saying something the first time doing something first time and i think that's something that is just a frame of mind remember that you've learned loads about this now you've studied all the data you've done all the research 
and try and remember you weren't always like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll, that's, yeah. yeah, that's very deep. And actually <clears throat> in, in our team, we do this routinely. We call it fresh eyes. So yeah. when somebody is working on a project, of course, you're so immersed in the project, you don't really see yeah. it anymore. You are like very like streamlined into uh, details and things you have to adjust. So from time to time, we call somebody from the team who hasn't been in the project at all, mm. just to get their impression. So sometimes if you kind of do it yourself, because maybe you don't have that ability to shift into you know, a different perspective, yeah. Having that kind of support and, and, and realizing how important that is because you might be missing something is definitely, yeah, it's, it's something that we really try to always keep in mind because otherwise it's so easy to, as oh, yeah. you said, to shift into, okay, I know what I'm doing. This is like routine for me and you're probably missing something relevant just like you did in the example with, uh, you know, scanning through the data and saying that mm. something wasn't computing. So it's definitely, well, Rav, thank you so much because everything has been so interesting. And I really like the way you were able to translate like these two words seems to be so distant, but in a way you were telling your story, it really looks like everything kind of naturally shifted to this new environment of uh, uh, strategy and strategic work. So this is so nice because Something that we notice and we're very proud of in Sensor is that they have so many different skills. And so knowing that everything is there for a reason, and if you're looking back to where you are now, um, everything makes sense in retrospect because it helped you become the person you are now with your skill and your abilities. And now you're even able to share it with the, with the community. I think it's really like uh, the best testament to how cognitive diversity and, mm. and creative thinking can really make a difference in everyone's life. So thank you so much for modeling this. Um, how long have you been a member of uh, the Sense Network? Is it a year? A year, wow, <laughs> good. <laughs> Please. I wasn't Please. prepared for that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last surprise question. Uh, it's important to us because we have new people coming, of course, every month, every week we have new people, but we also have people that have been there a lot. And, and we like this kind of interaction because we believe that with every new person coming to the community, the community grows in, in diversity in, in different skills. So I will use this, uh, this um moment to just to remind everyone that uh, there is an open call to action so if you have and you probably have a specific skill a tool an abilities an experience and a knowledge that you think might be useful to the other sensor and nine out of ten it is useful to other sensors because then be able to apply it you know in their different work environment please be more like ralph <laughs> be brave and courageous and just uh i will put a link to to uh, a little type form where you can insert your information and just uh you know volunteer to be our next guest because uh as you see it's so interesting to uh have this little window on other people's life and experience and see how how valuable they are so Ralph, thank you so much for being the first, of course. That's really, probably this comes from your uh, actor uh, background. Like, yeah, I'm going to get on stage. So you really came here on stage and uh, you occupy the stage brilliantly. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, if you have any extra question, once uh, this um, little conversation is published, write them in the comment. I'm quite sure that at one point, Ralph, when he has time, will come back and answer your question. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It was wonderful and um, see you in the network whenever you want. <laughs> see you then. Thank you. Bye, everyone.